Hello everyone, welcome back to the letter last time we met our man Zack. And also we got together as a group and her friends saw that fucking weird letter and they're like, oh, you're probably crazy. But then Zack was like, hey, maybe we should just fucking hang out, chill, watch a movie. We haven't seen each other in a while. And you know what? I agree with him. I'm fucking staying for this movie. Any other day, I'd excuse myself and go straight home. But this is something special to Zack. Something he works so hard to bring to life. I should know better. I might be having a bad day, but being with the few people I care about far outweighs the idea of spending the rest of the day throwing a tantrum alone in my room. And what if that thing in the attic follows me home? I don't want to be left with my thoughts either. I can still see it whenever I close my eyes. And maybe, if I stay... Let our heads cool down first before telling them what happened. They'll listen to me? There's nothing you can't solve with a calm head. One step at a time, Isabella. That's what Mama used to tell me. Besides, I don't have the heart to ditch Zack. A smile is back on my face when I look back at him. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. Alright, that's the Isabella I know. My man. Oh good, I thought for sure you were going to cry. Ash, you little bitch boy. <coughs> ah, there we go. This time, I really do send an elbow straight to his stomach. Stupid Ash, being vertically challenged has his perks too. What was that for? Because you were being a dick. Stop calling me a crybaby. I'm not one. Aw, don't cry. You're gonna get punched again. Stop it. Okay, scaredy cat then. That too. If you repeat that, I swear I'll... <sighs> Let's just go. Without another word, Becca goes inside. She doesn't even stop to wait for us when I call after her. God, Becca needs to get the stick out of her ass. Ash and I exchange looks after that, the same question likely sitting inside of our minds. Did something happen at school after I left? Is she having a bad day too? I'll try asking her about it later, I guess. So, uh, you guys go catch up with her. I'll go get us the food, I promise. But you'll miss it. Didn't you say watching a movie without food ain't fun? And it ain't like I haven't seen it. I made it, remember? I'll be in there soon. Yeah. One friendly tap on my shoulder, and then he's gone. A few moviegoers are still miling about somewhere waiting in line for tickets, but otherwise most of the crowd are already inside. There's nothing much for us to do here now. Not a word of protest comes from me when Ash gestures for the two of us to head inside. And then? Are yeah. You sure it wasn't one of the cleaning crews? Absolutely sure. Somehow, halfway through the movie, the conversation steered towards what happened to the mansion. Oh, that's good. To be fair, Zack was the one who brought it up again. Okay, cool. Zack, my man! In his own movie's premiere! Now, the film's just serving as background noise while we're speaking in hushed tones, careful not to disturb anyone in the small hall. Well, except for Ash. I just hope we don't end up arguing about it again. We'll all get kicked out for sure. Though, with how loud Ash's voice is, we'll probably get thrown out way before any argument happens. Yeah, Ash, shut the fuck up. Only Becca remains engrossed in the movie, completely ignoring us. A fucking mood, honestly. She's been quiet the whole evening, speaking only when referring to, referred to. I, if I didn't know any better, I think we did something that offended her. Did we? And then I ran. You heard what happened after. I still think it's something else. It was standing right in front of me, Ash. He's one of the smartest people I know, but geez, he should have learned to listen. Press. Didn't he say he doesn't believe in these things? Why is he in this conversation again? I heard what you said, but it's a small room. There are a lot of things someone else could have done there without your knowledge. If I could see it up close, maybe I can... I am not going back there. Ain't that a problem if you're hosting an open house? <laughs> yeah. Rose does the first floor tour. I ain't sure ghosts can be restricted to one room, Bella. <laughs> the man... Our man has a point. There are no ghosts, Zack. Stop putting useless ideas in her head. Ash, shut the fuck up. Yeah, but I was thinking. Maybe all the house needs is a blessing. Wasn't it left uninhabited for years? 
He has a point. Oh, the house did change hands over the years from one distant rel relative of the... Fuck, I forgot how to pronounce their last name. Ooh, you haven't been here in a while. Ermine guards to another. None of them bothered to live in it, though. It remained that way up until its current owners decided to sell it. Why did I think of that? I didn't peg you as the religious type, Zack. Nothing like that, Ash. Who knows, though? It might bring something positive to the place. That's not a bad idea. I just don't know where I could find someone. You're not seriously considering a suggestion, are you? What the fuck else do you think we're gonna do? You want her to continue the open house fucking being scared as shit? Maybe... Even if the ghost doesn't exist, maybe a fucking blessing it will get... her mind at ease. Plus, if she doesn't do this open house, the bitch is poor. So... She really needs the money. So really, this is the best case scenario, whether or not the ghost is real. Do you have a better idea? Yeah, do you? I know where. I could contact him for you if you want. Ah, uh, yes, another character. Do that? I hope this character isn't a bitch boy. Or we can find you a psychologist instead. Like this bitch boy. There are only a few times in my life when I wish my glowers can kill. This is one of those. Ash, that is not a very appropriate thing to say right now. No, wait, that's not what I meant. Aha, his name changed to Ashhole. Ethnographer. I meant ethnographer. This guy's a psychologist too, of course, if you... Ashton, if you don't stop... Rebecca knows the guy I'm talking about too. She can vouch for him. Rebecca tears her eyes away from the screen at the mention of her name. Uh, what? Oh, are you talking about Professor Andrew? He used to work with my parents at the university. Ah, an Andrew. I can trust an Andrew. And can you guys keep it down? I agree. Sorry, scared cat here mentioned curses. Not that I'm saying this is one. But talking to him is a better solution for me than getting a random priest to bless an old house. He'll even help you figure things out, teach you a couple things. So, did his voice actor just n not whisper during this and instead of like, re-instructing them to whisper they just made up an excuse of why ash isn't whispering or is like ash just rude at movie theaters and probably put your fears to rest since this looks to be bothering you a lot it is thank you for noticing that ash ash might be right too however what zach suggested is something i'm more familiar with granted they don't believe me they're only giving me the suggestion suggestions to put my mind at ease, but it's better than being ignored or laughed at. But I can take comfort in knowing they are willing to hear me out. So, what do you think? It's your call. We'll go with whatever you want. I don't know. I... Who should I meet? Oh boy, um... You know... God, I did not expect another decision this early into the episode. I'm more with Zack about this because the other two just are brushing her off a lot more. And also, I agree, even if it's not real, even this if this isn't... Let's say, we know the ghost is real because we saw it with Isabella, but let's say, in the other's perspective, the ghost isn't real. At the very least, it would put Bella's mind at ease for the house to be blessed. Uh, so she can continue her job. I don't know what the fuck the professor would be able to do. Uh, cause besides his psychologist, um, job that Ash mentioned, um, I don't really know what the other one means. But I am more inclined with the priest anyways because it is Zack's suggestion and Zack is being a lot less of a dick right now than the other two. So... About it, but maybe we could go with Zack's idea? Yeah. I'm not so sure about that. Well, it wouldn't hurt to try, right? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least we did something than just stand around. I agree. I'll let you know when he's available, Bella. Yeah. I knew I could count on you. Zack, my man. I said keep it down. You keep insisting that we still watch it. You're not even paying attention yourselves. I agree, Becca. Deal, Rebecca. I'm the one who broached the subject in the first place. 
It's still your film, Zachary. A good film, mind you. You worked hard on this. Oh my god, please don't start an argument. We're gonna get kicked out. The least out. we could do is watch it with you. And that's what y'all doing. I really appreciate all of you making time for this. Oh my god, please Sorry, watch the film. We'll stop now. Yes. I throw her an apologetic look. Even if Ashes is the only one she should be reprimanding, but her attention is already back on the screen. She's ignoring us again. When Becca's acting this way, there's a big chance something's nagging at her. We really need to talk. We all fall into a comfortable silence after. The kind you can only share with the people you're most at ease with. For the first time today, the letter lays forgotten in my bag, if only for a few hours. Night has fallen by time we exit the movie house. Despite the late hour, the streets are still bustling full of people. Those about to head home, those set to meet someone, even those simply wandering about. Walking this sea of unfamiliar souls strikes me how easy it is for one to get lost in a city of nondescript as Luxborn. I was afraid, too. At one point, back when I was new and had just set foot in this place, now with familiar pate, Faces walking with me, it feels a little like home. Ash and Zack bid us goodbye shortly before Beck and I cross to the other side of the street. The former claiming he's got a few freelance jobs to take care of, of before the day ends. And Ash? Eh, who knows, he never tells. Sometimes he'll just randomly appear at your doorstep looking for a place to crash. He does that to Zack a lot. Much to the latter's frustration. They're low-key fucking, but okay. But he's a busy guy too, in spite of his of the laid back air he gives off. Thanks for today, everyone. No problem, Zach. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Oh, cool. Love that. <laughs> A sensation. Cold, sickening, drowning, my chest tightening, breathing, becoming labored. I taste blood in my mouth. The edges of my vision blurs. In the distance, amidst the countless nameless people going about their lives, a voice reaches out to my, me, pleading even as I clench my eyes tight and clasp my hands over my ears. Whispering and whispering and whispering, calling out. Somebody. Isabella? Earth to Isabella. At her voice, the whole world suddenly snaps into place. The murmur is gone. I open my eyes. Becca raises an eyebrow at me in question. Are you listening? Are you coming with me? Oh, I... Yeah. Just... Okay. Sorry. I spaced out. You always do that. Okay, yeah, but this time I had a fucking guest, so... I follow her without complaint, not before sneaking a glance to the far end of the street, where the voice came from, or another sight of set of eyes might be staring at me. Nothing. There are only Zack and Ash watching over us as we head back to where Becca parked her car. If I'm expecting to see something or someone there, I try not to let it show. Try not to think of the tiny print pics of fear crawling at the pit of my stomach. See you guys some other time. Later, boys. Yeah. See ya. Don't die. At another glance, with the final wave, we go off on our own ways. I don't know what I saw, I don't know what I heard, I don't want to know. And if this is what would help me- Oh my god, I needed a burp. Anyways. And if this is what would help me sleep tonight, what would give me back that normal, let's see, in my life, then so be it. Ah, a Saturday. The darkness closes around me, grasping. Okay, this seems like a good place to save. Let's save. Grasping, pulling, engulfing me. The ground caves in without warning. I'm falling. My eyes snap open. 
Okay, it was, it was a dream. Oh, look at the nice little picture of us. And our messy ass room. For an instant, it doesn't immediately register where I am. Both my back and shoulders ache after I've fallen asleep, all hunched up the, the night before. Drenched in sweat, the nest of pillows I often keep around me feels more like suffocating than comforting. I let my eyes adjust to the bright morning light streaming through my window and allow my breathing to slow down before untangling myself from the pile. I haven't had a single dream since coming to Luxborn, or at least none that I can recall having. I'm gonna drink some fucking water. Okay. It's a shame because they used to be so vivid. Not the crazy vivid, but the more pleasant kind that I tell my siblings about. Maybe it's just the stress of living alone? The knowledge that I'll always wake up in an empty apartment with no one to tell stories to? What time is it? Habit forces me to look over to the clock, even with soreness weighing heavily on my shoulders and the compulsion to never leave my bed for the day. Now, heartbeat, I am up. Oh, man. Of all the times to oversleep. Towel? Towel? Where's my towel? Admittedly, it's a weekend, as an unspoken rule that entitles me to extra hours of sleep. But if Rose didn't kill me yesterday, she sure as hell will now. Now, right after what happened, oh lord, one box of donuts as peace offering won't be enough this second time around. Grabbing my towel, I'm already a short step away from the bathroom when a muffled raking comes out from my bag. There's a moment of indecision at first, my mind conflicting whether or I should just ignore or answer it. But what if it's Rose? Or worse, our boss? Ah, sheesh. In the end, the rational part of my brain wins out. The letter from yesterday peeks out when I pull the advice out. Just the sight of it is enough to put me in a foul mood, and it takes every force of will for me to ignore it in favor of answering the call. The caller ID reads as Mama. Mama. It's around 4.45 p.m. in the Philippines right now. An unusual time for them to call. Oh, what if it's the demon? Usually it's around noon time here and I'm the one calling, not the other way around. Better for them to use that money on something else than an international call. Regardless, in the most cheerful tone I can Hello. gather. Hello, Grace? How are you? Mama, I'm doing okay. How are you guys over there? Okay, so it's not a we're demon. Good, we're good. EJ won a storytelling contest at school the other week. Brought home a medal. I thought you should know. There's a tired lute in her voice as she speaks. It's been there since Papa had to leave his job. I wish there's something I can do for her. But miles away like this, the least I'm able to do is not make her worry. If only my older brother would actually lend her a hand, but Lord knows if that'll ever happen. Odds are Akua Jordan's already drinking right now. Again. I can't count on my older sister either, knowing she has a family of her own and, well, eight Anne's financial situation isn't exactly great right now, having ran herself knee-deep in debt. Eight? Is that like a, another way to say aunt? Great! That's great! Tell him congratulations from me. And let him know I'm gonna send him a little something extra this Christmas. How about Nico? Karen? Michael? I hope they're okay? They're doing well. They wanted to talk to you, but they're all busy with school. Oh no, that's fine. I don't want to bother them. Just tell them to keep doing their best for me. I'll just call back when I know they're not busy. And Papa? How's Papa doing? It's a subject I'm a bit hesitant to broach. From the way Mama's voice hitches, she doesn't want to bring it up either. Papa. Grace, Papa's... He's having a little difficulty right now. Weak appetite, he's having trouble swallowing, and lost a few pounds. But the doctor said we should keep encouraging him. It just means his body's accepting his new treatment well. The money you sent last time helped a lot to pay for it, by the way. Oh. I see. Th that's good. 
I won't deny that life has gotten a little tougher for our family. It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. But ever since he was diagnosed with a sickness five years ago, he had been unable to provide for us. Now the burden of feeding eight mouths and settling Papa's bills all rest on my shoulders. Although Mama makes a little, accepting sewing and laundry jobs in our neighborhood is scarily enough to cover the costs of day-to-day -day living, let alone the bloating hospital bills. We can't even accept help from our own government because the health insurance there barely covers anything. I'm sure he'll get better soon. Is he well enough to talk? Do you think I'll be able to speak to him, Ma? Silence. I start to think that the call got cut out until- Listen, Grace. Maybe it's better if we transfer Papa to a different hospital. Somewhere cheaper? What? Why? Did something happen? Is it the deposit issue again? Give me the hospital's number. I'll talk to them. No, it's nothing bad. The service here is good. Too good. Even the doctors. But I'm worried you're working yourself to the ground because of it. Mama, we've been through this before. I want the best for Papa. And don't worry about the bills or the medicine, or me for that matter. I can handle myself. Everything's going well here. In fact, in fact, we're about to close a large sale. Hopefully. If not, I'll find another way. She doesn't need to know that. Sorry, Mama. You taught me not to lie, yet look what I'm doing. I'll have money to send over soon to cover the rest of Papa's treatment. And there's more than enough for Karen, Nico, Michael, and EJ's school tuition, too. Thank you so much, dear. I appreciate it. We all do. But I... I just wish you'd come home to us soon. Uh... Kalaninka Ui? Is that how you pronounce that? When are you coming home? EJ, the youngest, used to be the only person asking me that. How do you respond to a question you don't have a definite answer to? Five years later and I can't give them a straight one. I smile, though Mama can't see it. I bite my lips from quivering, my voice from shaking. She's got enough on her plate as it is. I don't need to weigh her down with unnecessary concerns. Promise me you'll be there to welcome me when I do, okay? Of course. I'm sorry, Grace. I need to take this for a while. There's a small commotion on the other end. The sound of gates opening, the voice of a child, EJ, talking excitedly about his day at school, tapping a feet on the floorboards as he runs. It's been years since I went home, but I can still picture the whole scene in my mind. How tall is he now? Are the neighborhood kids bullying him now that I'm not around? Did Mama rearrange the furniture in the living room again? What are they having for dinner today? I miss them. I miss them so much. It's okay, Ma. I need to go too. I've got work today. I'll call again soon, alright? On a Saturday? Oh, never mind. Take care of yourself, dear. I love you. I love you. Bye. It ends with a soft click, leaving half-truths and empty promises hanging in the air. Closing my eyes for a moment, I take a deep breath and shake away the thoughts beginning to swim inside my head. It's pointless to mull over these things right now. Okay, Isabella. Time to get that mansion sold. Unfortunately, before I can take a single step away from my phone, it rings again. No doubt Mama forgot to say Mama? something. Did you forget anything? That is Rose. Never mind that. Get yourself in the office. Hurry! Office? What about the open house? Oh no. Is it Sir John? Did he hear about yesterday? Am I in trouble? Oh god, oh god, oh god! I'm gonna get yelled at, aren't I? What do I do? Um, I'll buy you an extra box of donuts if... No, no, no. It's nothing like that. Will you calm down? They probably gotta sell from those, uh, rich couple, huh? Get yourself here. I have a feeling they gotta sell from that rich couple. There's a telltale din of several feet shuffling against a wooden flooring and an indistinct yelling in the background before Rose cuts the connection. That isn't in any way comforting, but it's enough reason for me to hastily discard my phone and finish my shower in record time. 
I make it to our office within 20 minutes of leaving my apartment, completely disheveled and out of breath. A feat if I take into account my usual travel time. Routine clamor common to Breal or Realty Corporation's Luxborn office greets me as soon as my book crosses the threshold. Papers rustling, telephones ringing at sporadic intervals, agents talking at varying volumes, staff moving about, and... Oh boy. My boss's words turn muffled as someone else closes the door to his office, likely the work of our HR manager. Throughout the past weeks, he's been in a bad mood over a few employees who have failed to report to work. I hear they're still trying to get a hold of him to no avail. The result is half their workload have been shifted to all available staff so as to not lose clients. Not that I mind the extra work, if anything, it means they'll have more to send to my family back home. Although the rumors of a branch closure circulating because of this is indeed a bit worrisome. My bag barely touches the top of my table when Rose pulls me aside. I need you to help me with these papers. Time for water. If you could also get these signed and photocopied before lunch today, that would be great. One after the another, she thrusts a bunch of paperwork in my hands without explanation. A page flutters away from the top of the pile. I lean down to pick it up and my eyes scanning the top of the page as I straighten. A purchase and sale agreement, I fucking told you, baby. The house got sold. Rose simply gestures her thumb in the direction of our visitor lounge when I tilt my head in question. There, seated on sofa and looking completely out of place in the humbly decorated room, is the same couple from the day before. The right! Yes, I was right! Ha <laughs> ha! Anyways, we're like 26 minutes into the episode right now, so I'm going to save it here. It's actually interesting in the saves. Uh, it says Isabella, which implies that we can play as other people. Which implies that Isabella might die. Or we just might have a function where we play as other people. I don't know. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And I will see you all next time. Goodbye!